Last year, we took this barren spot in my backyard and built an incredibly beautiful natural pond. I added some awesome koi and even grew and added plants to the pond part. But if you look around the pond, it's kind of like I've got a Ferrari engine in a minivan. And that changes today because in this video, we are completing the pond ecosystem. And at the end of the video, I'm putting five new fish friends in the pond, courtesy of Petco, who are the sponsor of this video, but more on that later. So after I added the koi in, it was a pretty simple grow to add some lilies and even grow some edible watercress, which really makes the pond look amazing. But when we got to the exterior, it's kind of where I ran into some problems because building out this pond, we had to move a lot of earth. So this is really sort of heavy compacted clay. Some of the things I've tried haven't really worked that well. And to be honest, I'm also not the best landscape designer in the world. So I called up an old friend, Sarah Bendrick, and she came over, did a little bit of consulting, and then it was time to hit the nursery. I've recruited Jacques to help out our resident garden hermit. What do you think of the collection? It looks awesome. I love the ground cover selection and like the collection of colors here is really interesting as well. The thing that Sarah taught me, little landscape design tip, is if you've got existing colors in this flagstone here, this sort of yellows and bluish hues, try to replicate that to create a more cohesive color palette. And then the thing is, we've got these different heights, the ground cover, the large trees, your, one of your favorites, Pride of Madeira Absolute. here. And what we need to do though, before we can even get to planting is, the problem is we have this soil that's not well defined. We don't have a border to it. Yep. And it's also quite, quite heavy. So we've got our tools. It's time to rough up the soil. So Jacques, we have three major problems with this project right now. Yeah. And number one is that the tool I brought, <laughs> it's not even gonna do the job. So that one's out. I need a Matic because this is extremely hard soil. Okay. So what we have to do is break it up like that but then that's not even gonna fix the real problem because clay soil needs something to lighten it. Sand is not the answer, compost is the answer. Yeah, improves the drainage, lets it breathe essentially. And then the third sort of problem I see, this is gonna be an area with a sitting bench with some great landscaping around mm -hmm. it, is you really want to not break the illusion of this pond, right? So we have this pond liner here that's kind of peeking out and I wanna see if we can use some of these river rocks once we finally build it out to just put that final touch. Yeah, absolutely. It'll look way cleaner with everything planted and covered up. Yeah. So what we need to do now is start getting to the mattock. <laughs> Let's see if I can do anything with this. <laughs> it's, it's a starting point. So we've got the mattock, we've got the shovel, we have a method. It's a three-step method called the mattock pop, the flat shovel chop, and then Jock unleashes the jackhammer. And you're gonna see what <laughs> we'll that see looks that like later. in a second. But let me give it the mattock. Not the best form, but it's all good. There There's is the pop. There's that pop. Okay, so that's an example. Come in with a shovel chop. So then we break up the clumps. You would rake in some compost. So I'll steal a little bit, Jacques. All right. And it's time to give it that old Jacques jackhammer. All right, stand back. I'm scared. <laughs> what if I told you you could get your own one of these for just two easy payments of $19.99? <laughs> yeah, you have the jackhammer? I got the hydrophobe. The hydro, the hydro hammer. The hydro hammer. Hit me with that fresh water. Okay, a little fresh pot. A little. <laughs> Every pond ecosystem needs a way to move through it and I'm very lucky that I still have some pieces from the initial install here. So I'm just grabbing a few and extending that path up the hill. We got a few more pavers to place, but sun's starting to get low already. We need to get these in the ground before the sun sets. I'm gonna start with the larger pieces first. So the leptospermum, I wanna throw it back there right behind my water cistern. So it kind of blocks this house that I have over here. Makes me feel a little bit more like I'm in a real backyard pond. Well, we chose a ton of plants for this project. A few of them really stole the show. First off, the leptospermum tree, 15 feet tall. 15 foot wide spread that's going to really fill in the backdrop of the pond ecosystem. And then Pride of Madeira, a classic plant in our area, even though it is not technically a native. It can spread, but I'm not so worried in an actively managed backyard and it brings in bees like crazy. 
For ground cover, we chose a mix of Creeping Thyme and Isotoma. Isotoma with these periwinkle and white flowers dotting the pond lining, and then the Creeping Thyme up in the stepping area because it can take a little bit more abuse. And then finally, some salvias and sages that bring in that native flair as well as that deep, deep purple, along with some crazy hummingbird moths. We got almost everything we wanted done, but we're not finished yet. We couldn't get all the ground covers in, and there are a few more problems that we want to sort out with placements and layouts. But the sun's getting low, so we're gonna have to hit this on another day. We're back for day two. There's just a little bit more to do. I have the English thyme and isotoma ground cover to pepper in. The more I put in, the easier it's going to be to creep and really fill in this space. And then finally, because this, sadly, isn't an actual natural pond, there is a liner at the very margins of this pond that I'm gonna start covering with some of this river rock, kind of breaking the border, so to speak. So I'll have the ground cover coming in, the rocks coming out, making it look like a really natural landscape. Let's get to it. So I got my river rock, and I just wanna come in, dump a bunch of it around, and cover up this liner. Even if it spills over, that's totally fine but we just gotta get to shoveling. I got one more bucket to go. It is looking really good around the pond edge now, but it isn't complete without that final little touch inside the pond, which is coming to our house tomorrow. So I'll see you in a sec. Looks like we got our special delivery. These came overnight, five hand-selected koi from Petco. We need to get them acclimated and float them in the pond. All right, we've got our koi. I'm very excited to see what we have inside here. Like I said, hand-picked out. And we got these from peco.com. So you can buy it and then it ships overnight to your door just like this, which obviously is very important for the health of the fish. For the month of May, it is koi month at Petco. So you can grab koi for 20% off, whether it be online, shipped overnight, or in store. So let's see what we got here. First off, we have a butterfly koi. And I'm gonna name all of these koi. I asked everyone on the Epic Gardening team what to name our koi. This comes from Molly on our team. She wants to name this one Flip. So in we go with little Flip. In we go with number two. We have the Kohaku koi. This one, again a name from Molly on our team, is Chef. This one has a very beautiful yellow head, but the rest of the body is completely white. So I'm curious to see as it gets older how that color is going to change and mature. Okay, number three, another butterfly koi. This one was named by Jacques on the team. So this little guy or girl is going to be named Chip. All right, here we go. We have a yellow koi, pure yellow. Really pretty sort of creamish yellow color on this one. I don't think I have one like this in the pond right now. Ian on our team, who's actually behind the camera right now, he named this one Squish. And our last guy, the biggest of the bunch, which is a tricolor koi, a very classic koi pattern. This one is actually named not by one of our team members, but after one of our team members. This is Paul on the Epic Gardening team. He's our new garden manager here for the last few months or so. And this is Paul. Paul's going in the pond. Okay, before I get them in, what I wanna do is hit a little bit of stress coat just to make sure that they're well acclimated. I'm gonna do maybe like half a capful or something like that. Put that in, and now we need to take it over to the pond. It's been about half an hour. The time has arrived for these incredible koi to hit their new home in the pond ecosystem. Thanks again to Petco for sponsoring this video. Like I said, it's koi month in the month of May, 20% off all koi, whether you buy them online and shipped overnight or you pop into a store and grab some yourself and off they go. Oh my gosh, they are well acclimated and loving it. It's only been a day and the koi are already loving it in the pond. And not only that, I've seen hummingbird moths, hummingbirds, new types of birds, crows, and even honeybees hanging out and enjoying the new ecosystem. And it's only been a few days. In a season's time, it's going to look absolutely incredible. And if you're curious how the pond was built in the first place, including why I'm sitting over thousands of gallons of water, check our pond build out. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.